Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Hada tonight. This is our third and final segment for the program this evening. Thank you for continuing to be with us. We hope it's been beneficial and the final uh, 15 or so minutes that we have left will also. Uh, we uh, have a new guest that has joined us to talk about the subject of pursuing or seeking knowledge. Brother Lukman, ha uh, Lukman Hakim, thank you so much for being with us. Welcome to Hada tonight. Oh, welcome. It's very nice to be here. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, we're talking about pursuing knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'd like to read uh, real quickly a few lines of a definition. Mm -hmm. I just did a Google search for the word knowledge, mm -hmm. and the, the f first one that came up was Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. It says that knowledge can refer to a theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, it says, is a familiarity, an awareness, or understanding of someone or something, such as facts, mm -hmm. information, descriptions, uh, or skills, which is acquired through experience or education or by perceiving, discovering, or learning. That's mm. the mm. general definition of mm. uh, knowledge. Mm. So we as Muslims are encouraged to pursue knowledge, mm. uh, which according to the definition is not just information, but skills, mm. uh, uh, and uh, etc. Mm. Um, please talk to us Mm. as Muslims. Why mm. is it important mm. for us to pursue knowledge? Mm. First of all, let me begin by saying all praises are to Allah, the Lord of the universe. May peace and blessing be upon our beloved Prophet, his family, his companions, and for those who follow them in the righteousness until the day of judgment. Mm. First of all, that we have to know is that knowledge is very important in Islam. The knowledge is very important in our religion. If you look at the first ayah came to the Prophet Muhammad was talking about Ikra. What does Ikra mean? Ikra has meaning reading, mm -hmm. whether reading from the book or memorizing or reciting something from your memory. That is why if you look at the first revelation that came to the Prophet Muhammad, when the Prophet Muhammad was in the cave of Hira, Archangel Gabriel was coming down to him and he was asking the Prophet Muhammad, O oh Muhammad Ikra, O oh Muhammad read. And the Prophet Muhammad was replying, Ma ana bikari, I could not read because the Prophet thought that Jibril was asking him to take the book and then going to read this book. And as you know that the Prophet Muhammad was illiterate, he could not read and write. How Archangel Jibril was asking him to write. But the reading here is not the reading from the book, but it's meant to reset something, the, re the revelation, coming down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from very beginning, Islam encourage the importance of knowledge because Islam encourage the reading or ikra. So we are the people of kira'a, the people of reading mm -hmm. because reading is the key for any knowledge. If you want to become more educated people, mm. if you want to understand everything, mm. we have to read. Without reading, we will not have any knowledge. Mm. So I would like to emphasize here, Islam is the religion of knowledge. In fact, the first revelation came down to the Prophet Muhammad was talking about the importance of reading. And also, if we are going to look at the history of the Prophet, for instance, when the Prophet Muhammad was migrating to Medina, the first things that the Prophet Muhammad was did is establishing the mosque, establishing the masjid. And the companion of the Prophet in the time, they were staying in the mosque, they were gathering in the mosque, in order to learn something, in order to learn religion from the Prophet directly. Not just to pray. 
Yes, it was a learning because center. the mm. mosque is in the central of education. Mm -hmm. It's not only the place for praying, but it's social place, a religious place, education place, and so far mm. and so on. Mm. And I'm going to talk about the first school, the first madrasa that the Prophet Muhammad was established in the time in Medina. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I, I, I uh, um, thank you very much, Brother uh, Luqman. Okay. Very nice mm. introduction uh, to uh, this very long and rich mm. tradition we mm. have uh, mm. of uh, pursuing knowledge as Muslims. Mm. I don't know if you had a chance to see the second segment. We were talking mm. about African expatriates in Egypt. Mm. And the majority of them are pursuing knowledge, mm. Islamic knowledge at Al Azhar. Mm. Uh, but one of the things that came out of that discussion mm. was a problem of mm. brain drain, mm. where some uh, expatriate Muslims mm. are coming to uh, from uh, from to Egypt from various African countries, mm. and are overstaying their their visas. Mm. Uh, maybe even a success case where they've finished, they've graduated, mm. they've become knowledgeable, they've mm. become sheikhs. Uh, but are staying behind, and they s they illustrated by saying that some of the masjids here have like 30 sheikhs because the brothers are not going back home. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to ask you about intentions, mm -hmm. right? I'd like to weave into this important mm -hmm. about the best intention to have mm -hmm. when pursuing knowledge. Mm -hmm. The intention is very important in Islam. If you are going to talk about the importance of intention in Islam, the Prophet ever said, al a'malu bin yad. Every action is determined by attention. Mm -hmm. That is why intention is very important in Islam. If you look at the works of many Muslim scholars, they used to begin his book by, by this hadith, Innam al a'malu bin yad. And some of them said, Everyone who wants to write any book, they or he should start with this hadith. The reason why, because this hadith is very important, it reminds us to have a good sincerity. If you have good sincerity, if you have a good attention, that you are going to seek knowledge in order to Please, Allah, you will be rewarded. You will give benefit for, for your ummah, for your people, and also you will get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why seeking knowledge in Islam is obligation. Mm -hmm. It's not just, I mean, something optional. It is something obligation. Obliga I want to ask mm. you about the, mm. the types of knowledge. I mean, there's all kinds of knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, are we encouraged to only pursue? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd like for you to make the case mm -hmm. that we should also be pursuing knowledge, especially for our careers, mm -hmm. for our academic disciplines, mm -hmm. uh, developing a sense of history. Mm -hmm. uh, is that also a, a part of this a pursuit that we should have? Yes, you are absolutely right. In Islam, actually, if you are talking about the kinds of knowledge, Knowledge is not limited in religious sciences, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also it includes scholar sciences. There is no any dichotomy, there is no any separation between religious knowledge and scholar knowledge. If you are going to read the Quran, Al Quran is not talking about spiritual, spiritual dimension only. But Al-Quran is talking about many things mm -hmm. in order we try to contem contemplate, to think of creation. So in Al-Quran itself, we don't find religious knowledge only, but also we find scholar knowledge. If you are look at the history, for instance, in the medieval ages, Islam produced many scholars. Mm -hmm. They were not expert in religious sciences, mm. but also they were expert in scholar sciences. Mm. In fact, we have mm, scholar knowledge. For for instance, in the time when Islam was 
in Andalus, in, in, in Spain right now, mm -hmm. we have philosophers, we have sciences. Many scholars yes. like Ave Rose or Ibn Rush, if you are familiar with him, mm -hmm. he, he was the jurist. In fact, he wrote the most beautiful book in Islam jurisprudence, mm -hmm. in the Islam jurisprudence, Bidatul Mujtahid. We study this book in uh, religious seminary, in Islamic seminary, but also he was a great commentator of Aristotle, the most greatest philosopher from Greek. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's mean that Ibn Rush, he was expert in religious sciences and also expert in scholar sciences. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and this also relates to our mm -hmm. last conversation, mm -hmm. um, this problem of brain drain. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have mm -hmm. great Muslim scientists, uh, academics mm -hmm. doing great and wonderful things, but we don't see them as much because mm -hmm. they've migrated mm -hmm. uh, to non-Muslim countries in Europe, the United mm -hmm. States, mm -hmm. working for NASA and uh, Microsoft mm -hmm. and all these major companies and, mm -hmm. and government agencies mm -hmm. doing wonderful things for those mm -hmm. governments and those uh, mm -hmm. uh, Western companies. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could get more to stay home and do great mm -hmm. things for mm -hmm. Muslim majority mm -hmm. countries, mm -hmm. then I think we could see better. Mm -hmm. Mm. This r continuation of this rich uh, mm. heritage of pursuing mm. knowledge in all uh, aspects of life. Mm. And also, I would like to address in this issue, we actually have problem in our institution, in our universities. Mm. For instance, the student of Al-Azhar, they just give attention of religious sciences, and they forget about scholar sciences. And also, the curriculum doesn't support it. Mm. For instance, we find a lot of sheikh, a lot of uh, religious scholar, mm -hmm. but they don't know anything about the scholar sciences. This problem, and then they will give fatwa, and they will give uh, religious verdict, and his fatwa, fatwa is contradicting to the natural science, let for me, instance. Let me, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, you just mm -hmm. answered my question. Mm -hmm. I just want to, so, mm -hmm. so there, it, it's, it's, it's very, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mm. tightly focused on religious sciences at the expense of mm. the sciences mm. and uh, mathematics and mm. s yes, all this type yes, of thing. Yes, I, I don't say that, for instance, Shah, he must uh, reach the high level of natural sciences, mm -hmm. but at least they know the basic of uh, a scholar mm -hmm. sciences. We, In we fact, for instance, mm -hmm. Ibn Taymiyyah, I think you are familiar with him. Yeah. He is, I mean, the big scholar in medieval time, mm -hmm. he said that I study astronomy, I study medicine before I, I become I become a, a, a great scholar. Uh -huh. uh. Yeah, got it. Um. In, in in the United States, the education system we call it general education. Mm -hmm. By law, you're required mm -hmm. to take some English, some math, some history, some humanities. Mm -hmm. You have to be exposed to all these subjects and mm -hmm. then do your major subject. Mm -hmm. But you're saying at Azhar, it's not like that. They, they no, oh. <laughs> actually, it's problem if if we are talking the education in the schooler countries, they don't give attention to religious sciences. But if we are going to talk about education in Islamic countries, they just focus on religious sciences. Hmm. It's it have to be balanced. Yeah, you have to study religious sciences, and also you have to study. Scholar census. I, I'd oh. like to add, thank you. I'd like to ask you mm. about um, e e a plan. Mm. Uh, is there a certain approach that we should have in mind? Mm. Let's let's say we'll, we'll talk about religious knowledge mm. for the time being. Mm. Maybe it's a new Muslim. Mm. Um, I mean, there's a whole body, mm. 14 centuries of scholarship mm. about uh, you know the the religion, mm. the theology, etc. Is there a recommendation for how to approach all this information? This mm -hmm. no, I mean the knowledge that you have to study is the knowledge that is relating how to practice your religion. Mm -hmm. Since you are, for instance, a new Muslim, you does need to study all bodies of Islamic sciences. You need many times. You need to know about the different opinion of scholars and so far and so on, and then. 
you will be get confused how to practice this religion. So it should be in stages. Yes. Okay. And the first we, stage is, mm, you would say? Mm, we uh, have to study the senses gradually, mm -hmm. step by step. Okay. So the first thing that y we have to do if we are new Muslim, we have to study players, how to give charity, how to fast mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. the r man of Ramadan is coming and also how to perform Hajj if you have means, if you have material to go to Makkah. Mm. This is the basic things that you have to know. Mm. Mm. Make ourselves experts of yes. the five pillars in Islam. Yes. Mm. At least we, we have to study how to pray, mm. how to perform ablution, how to, uh, what is something that can break the solar, for instance, mm. something like that. Mm. Brother Lukman, mm. we have very quickly <laughs> <laughs> run out of time. Uh -huh. we, two minutes to wrap up things. Uh -huh. uh, how would you like to end our conversation? Uh, I think the point that I would like to conclude my statement in this discussion, we have to know that Islam encourage us to study all knowledge. In Islam, there is no dichotomy between religious knowledge and scholar knowledge. Mm. We have to study both. Mm. We cannot, I mean, pay attention to Islamic knowledge only and then we leave school and knowledge. We have to study both. This is the most important message that I'm going to address in this discussion. All right. Mm. Brother Lukman, thank you so much for being with you us. You are we welcome. Mm. Mm. We enjoyed our time mm. with you. Dear viewer, we have reached the end of the program for today. Thank you so much. We hope it was beneficial and informative. Uh, inshallah, we'll be back tomorrow to continue the program with more news, information, and discussions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.